Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much that you're here this morning. Father, I pray that will you speak to us, open our spiritual ears, that we shall hear your voice. And I pray that you touch my lips this afternoon. That Everything that I will speak will be none other than your will. Lord, I pray you open people's hearts this afternoon that they will hear your word and let your word change us. Father, I pray that let's leave this place changed, transformed, and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, like when I was preparing this message, I began, I had four messages that were so strong on my heart that I wanted to share. You know, and through prayer, you know, I had to discern because we don't have time for four sermons today, right? You know, through prayer, God brought this message on my heart. Amen. 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 So, would you open your Bible to the book of Job? Job chapter 1. And we're going to read beginning from verse 1 to verse 6. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. One who feared God and turned away from evil. They were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 female donkeys and very many servants so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate, consecrate them and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of all them all. Then Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cast God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now, the Bible tells us in the land of Uz, the land of Uz, there lived a man, his name was Job. Amen. The book of Job, Job lived at the same time the patriarchs and the fathers of faith like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when they lived. It's a historic book, one of the old, you know, really old books. You know, if, it were, if the Bible was to be arranged in a historic order, it would be uh, around Genesis 12. That's where when Job lived. You know, in that time, you know, when there was no nation of Israel, you know, in that time, where, when there was no group of believers. 
God spoke through patriarchs. Men that he revealed himself to. And they sought after him. Now the Bible tells us about Job. The Bible says he was a righteous man. He feared God. And he would shun away from evil. Now, for us, let us first hold on and pause for a moment. The Bible talks about this man in that kind of manner. But right ahead in the chapter, we see even God himself testifying about it. That Job was indeed a righteous man. As we continue ahead, 6.12, the devil is asked, the Lord says he's a witness to his man Jerob. He's filled with the Holy Spirit and he's born again. But when the devil checks in his books, he also testifies that Job is indeed a righteous man. He exists. Amen. Amen. I pray to God to help us that we shall try to walk in Job's life a life that is blameless that even if they called for a servant from your house and they are asked tell us about your master that servant will be able to testify that you were born again and you are God if they took your wife aside you can lie to all else but those close to you are not able to be deceived and you cannot deceive God the Bible says that he was a righteous man and God blessed him he gave him seven sons and three daughters it was so important during that time to give birth to boys just like it is in our culture morning service. I told people in the morning service Mama wange, that my mother tata wange my father told me that he wanted to give birth to only four children but right now we are six the first born was a girl and they get got a second one who was also a girl and the third born a girl so the last born Anne. Praise God for Anne because if she was a boy then I wouldn't have been born. After my mother gave birth to Anne, that is when my father decided that he should give her more children. And my mom prayed and said, God, if you give me a boy, then I'll get born again. And the next year, I was born. Amen. Amen. Kati. The next one was a girl and they stopped. What am I trying to say? Job is greatly blessed with seven sons. Some people are suffering, they want to give birth to girls because they have only boys. But Job was blessed with three daughters. God bless him with a united family which is rare it's the reason why we have family Sunday people born of the same mother and father but they don't work together they hate one another we pray to bring unity in family God bless him he had a united family. He raised his sons and daughters well. The Bible says that every son had his own home. Men are normally 
rich but their sons never live or Abana bagira ne bazimba ne baba na makaga abenga buli rucha bakola kapate mu makago omu But the sons had each one their own house and they had parties in each one's house Ngabaniriza banawe okujjo kubega tako And they would call the three sisters to come and join them in the party Wow God has blessed this man Mukama musaji ono tulabanga muwaddo mukisa Bible yesumesa The Bible teaches Katonda ya wayo bo bugaga That Job was given blessed by the Lord with wealth Yamua em endiga kasanvu He gave him 7000 sheep Bamekawa nongo runde endigo manye bei endiga How many of you know how much it costs to Bamekawa nongo tiro kugula ku ndiga oyizo kuba ino mudala gwa gwembuzi katinga bagena wanika bamanyenti otumixingiramu ne oyizo kuba ngo chimaji bomanji kale bobango ina bobo manye bei endiga endiga bajitunda sente meka How much is one sheep Esebo Ya meka sebo 10000 Aha 14 tuza gambi Around 130000 you can Mu manyize njagale byokulamuza Nze yange najibalide ku ceiling simitwaro musanvu Mine was costing 70000 according to my own calculation Bo kubisamu if you multiply Emirundi kasavu time of 7000 Ya ina milioni za Uganda bina muchenda mu mbuzi mu mbizi mu mundiga zoka Only sheep costed him 490 million shillings Ya ina ngamia He also had Bameka wanongo runde ngamia woli Anya manye beye ngamia Woli Zeze komugeza ali wano Kale nakoze research wange engamira a camel bobogeze no jigule kala moja if you went to karamoja to buy it emu eliya million emu ne kitundu one is 1.5 million shillings bogena no jigule kenya but if you bought it from kenya eja kuberi mbuka denga bubiri no kweyongera might be around 2 million ugandan shillings ashuku bisemu so let us multiply aine ngamia enkumi satu he had 3000 camels 4.5 billion That is 4.5 billion shillings. In just many Bible, kamba buli, wabo soma Bible, choji ita kubu yisi. Don't just go through Paris through the Bible. Eya wandi kamba Bible, ina songa rachi mino yabite kau. There are reasons as to why everything was indicated in there. Aina chageza koko tunyonyola. Because something is trying to be explained. Kare tugene maso, endogo yi, aina runde endogo yi wano. Kare. Zeze komu geze ya zemu kirasi. Kare. Aina endogo yi. And a donkey. Lukumi. He had one thousand dollars. I bought it at eighty thousand shillings. That is eighty million shillings. You got the So if you added up his wealth, I'm um, only those things that have been mentioned. We're not talking about land. We haven't mentioned the houses and everything else that he had. Billion tano. His, his worth was five billion shillings. Bible the Bible teaches that he had a name. He was known everywhere. If in the village where you come from, everybody knows who is rich. Muntu cha singa yobu gaga mu Uganda. Who is the greatest rich man in Uganda? Wanaitemu mumanyi musajja kya singa yo bugagwa mu Uganda. Museveni. <laughs> <laughs> Sudiru pareli ya yasinga. Mhm Museveni. <laughs> Waji? Kale kati gwe gwe genda ku gugo yo olumbulire cho jeyo. Naenze manyi Sudiru pareli ya yasinga bugagwa. Sudil is the greatest richest man in Uganda. Nao mumanyi. You also know. Wali ama bagambi ora ama agade kogera nyali abe oroko kiriza nze Richard siye gwe siye talking about faith but we're talking about the richest man. Yani mara nkubuza mu chyo gasinga yo bugaga mu church wano omumanyi and you know the richest man in this church. Ogenda kunonya nonya wano tulire moto kogambe na yera bikayono. You will look around and mention a name. He was famous. Yali mumanyifu. The Bible says he was the rich, richest man in the east bible yega mati yali asinga yo bugagge buvanjuba ekitegeza mwo bononye wa makaga yo butobula meaning that if you're looking for his home you wouldn't get lost urutu kama mu east chobuza omugagga wa wana abera wanga bakutwala pakewe you get to the east and you ask for his name they will take you up to his home you know, but the bible says let's just skip forward chapter 13 
no verse 13 to 20 katugende mu nyinyo ya 13 paka kulwa 2 the bible says bible yegamba now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine tia wona kulwa ali dumu batama nibe nebe wala bebe bali nga bali ida era nga banywero mwenge mu nyumba ya muganda wabo mukuru and there came a messenger to jobs and said ne wajjo mu vaka eri yobu nga yogeranti the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding besides them. And the Sabims fell upon and took them and struck down the servants. With the age of eh, we have just studying Amba. We have just You know, and okay, let's continue. And let's go to. You know the next chapter, the next verses say. One day, everything he had was taken away. The sheep, the the camels, the servants, all of them, they were taken away. Now, I want you to imagine, you know, maybe not to be talk about this. We normally lose through these things. We just go through the Bible and we think that I he I want you to all these think things. about the material possessions you have now. You have a house. God has blessed you. You have a car. You have a motorcycle. You have a motorcycle. You have your clothes. Every day you change. But one morning, you receive a phone call. That your car has been involved in an accident and it is all perished. All your clothes have been burnt up. Everything that you had has been destroyed. Just imagine all the things that you have been working for your entire life. Within seconds, not even one month. The bank comes and possesses everything. While it is still possessing them. What broke down Job? 19, eh? And behold, okay, let's start from 18. While your sons and daughters were eating and drinking in the wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and stuck the four corners of the house. And it, and it fell upon the young people and they are dead. Seven kids. Sons and three daughters. Ten kids. All of them dying. At once. As a father, it's hard for me to understand that. You know, I lost my daughter. It's something that I would never wish anyone to lose their child. It's hard for people to understand what you're going through when you're crying. I remember going to this baby, holding hands on her, Praying for the baby to rise up. I had faith. The church was praying for me. And the baby did not rise. And I had to take the next day the baby for burial. And people would come and tell me, ah, ah. Never mind, don't worry. The Lord is going to give you more children. Yes, indeed, He will give me other children. But it is a scar that can never leave my heart, no one can replace children. Now, all his kids have died. Bafude. I know Kolorumbe. He's got to put it up a funeral video, together with his wife, just them attending it. At that time, verse 20 says, by, by, read, Job Yobu. Tore his clothes, put on sackcloth. And fell on his feet. And worshipped 
God. Katonda. We praise God for what he has done for us. We worship God for who he is. Wabula to musinza olwecho chali. The church has so many people who are praisers. E kanisa ejuda abantu banji abatenderezo obutenderezza. And they are looking for, for they are moving from one church to another looking for a miracle so that they can praise him. Era ba yengera makanisa agenja ulo banonya byamagero basobola kumutenderezza. They will come to church as long as God is blessing them. Bajja kusigala nga bakongana mu kanisa kasaka tonda belanga chaba wo mukisa. Seven times a day they will give a tithe. Bajja nakusasura bimu byabwe bye 10 nga bwe bakongana. As long as everything is going on right. Kas- but out of this church my prayer is there will arise another group of people who are worshippers worshippers we worship God for who he is our God is holy our God is mighty our God is loving our God is strong Church, you need to have a revelation of who God is for you to worship him Job had that revelation. He knew that God was supreme. In spite of what he was going through. God was still seated on the throne. God was still faithful. I have come to tell you no matter what you are going through right now. Jehovah God is still faithful. Jehovah God is still loving. I don't care if you don't have a job right now. God is still faithful. He's still caring. He loves you. The church must embrace that revelation. Now when people get issues They leave church They go out and sing for another one And they deny God The book of Job The whole book of Job Answers one life question If you have a pen and paper I will ask you to write down Why does God allow bad things to happen to good godly people why does God allow them it's a question that's deep in our hearts when you switch on the news that question comes to you you read about the tsunamis you read about the landslides innocent people dying and you begin to question the sovereignty of God if God exists why did he allow the floods to rise up and innocent babies die if God is faithful why would he allow two children of a righteous man in Naruvure who loves God he's a believer he's two kids were young kids were coming back from a birthday party and someone abducts them doesn't stop there goes and kills them in cold blood why would god allow that man if god is sovereign why wouldn't he strike him with lightning 
those kids who would survive. That's the question we have in our hearts. And this morning, I've prayed for you that God Himself will begin to speak to you. And we are going to try to find answers through God's word. Why would a faithful girl, a girl who has abstained, done everything she has done for the church? Now she's 40 years old, she's not married. Why would God allow that? And actually, I see the other girl who is fornicating. But now she got married in, in, a, you know, in a glorious wedding. Why Luachi. is this brother's marriage dying? Wow, this guy is the best prayer warrior we have in church. But in spite of the anointing that flows on him, why? Why is his marriage falling apart? I know he has been faithful to God. Why does God allow those things to happen? Why? Luachi. That girl about seven times. And she keeps getting pregnant. This sister who got married in Chok holy matrimony. Six years they are looking for a child, the child is not there. Why? Number one. Trials are part of our Christian life. You know, the message I'm speaking here, you know, it's not something we're used to hearing. It's not something we're used to hearing. We don't say that on crusade. Trials are part of your Christian life. How many Christians do we have here? here? Jesus is not surprised yes, when you go through trials. Okay, just give us James 1 2. James 1 2. You know, you think you're going, Jesus is going to be surprised. Can we can you read all? Uh-huh. One, two, three, go. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. What? You know, James is speaking to the church that is the church. Eh? James was writing to a church in exile. Yes. Yes. Count it all joy. Count it all joy, church. Is anyone going through trials? My brother, my sister, if you are going through trials because of the gospel, count it all joy. Hallelujah. Now, God, God's plan for your life is that he wants to grow your faith at whatever cost. Satan's plan for your life is Satan wants to destroy your faith at whatever cost. The reason as to why when you got born again you were not taken straight to heaven is this the Lord has left you here alive on earth because he wants to grow your faith. Every day the Satan wants to destroy your faith. If to strengthen your faith, for your faith to be strengthened, if it means giving you a prado, then God will give you exactly that. So that you can be strong in faith. And if it means to give you ten houses, 
houses. That is the way you can stand and help and support the church. That is what the Lord is going to give to you. It means for the Lord to take them away from you. Eh? If it means for the Lord to take away your marriage, and that is what is going to help grow your faith. He's going to take them away. We normally don't listen to that. I have said at whatever cost and even the devil if it, to take you to hell is going to cost him to make you rich then he's going to do exactly that he's going to get his demon of poverty to, to away from you he's going to let his business increase and do well let the, let the business have more branches let him go out and trade in China let his ministry go out and attend church just let him be give him more money that he will not be able to even pay his tithe because the books about his money he will not be able to so never will let you increase he will give you more if it's a marriage, he will give you two wives. Is it children? Let him have more. If it's money, he will give you more. If it's a marriage, he will give you more. If it's a marriage, it is to possess Jesus in your Mwane life. Yesu to have Jesus with you where you are. The devil can let you own everything and have it Mwane all. I have traveled to nations but abroad. And what the devil did to them is that they have so much money. When they get sick, they can go to good hospitals. For His, all their kids are going government to school. UPE, the government nyo. has its own schools. So so if your child doesn't go to school, you'll be arrested by the police. If you get less than $2,000, then the government will help you, will support you. They have a lot of money. But they forsook the Lord. They don't need God, they think. I can go to any doctor. I can go and get everything that I want. I just go with my credit card and I own a car. Amen. Amen. There is a teaching, a doctrine that we know about that bad things happen to only the bad people and the good happens to only the good only. But I am here to tell you that both, both sides even those that don't want God or don't, don't like him they can and even those people who love the Lord can go through hard situations. That is according to the word of the Lord. The Lord has sent me to prepare a church that is the apostolic anointing upon me. 13 revelations Antichrist again that could And the abyss will be made. and everyone shall be forced or coerced to worship the beast. 
And whoever refuses shall be killed. So let me tell you, if we're supposed to have the kind of faith that we have, and you keep on changing churches because you haven't yet received something, you have gone around every big church just because you want a job. And you Shall you be able to give up your head when they get a panga and they tell you to put down your head? You said you're born again. Today is Mother's Day. How many of you will give up your head because you love Jesus? But I pray that by the time I finish, you will be determined. If they brought forth your children, and they told you that I'm going to shoot them down if you leave. That is where the church is heading to. Jesus has said they don't love me. Do you think that the world is going to love you? No, it is not. The Bible says carry your own cross and follow after me. Carry your cross and follow Jesus. Amen. They did not love him so they are not going to love you. Because you don't belong to the world, so you live in it. Now, amen. Amen. Number two. When you're going through trials and tribulations, people tend to jump and make quick conclusions. Did you see him? They have lost eight children. While praying, he's normally looking around at people. No wonder he has gotten those issues. When a child died, people spoke. And it was in church. Probably the Lord is punishing him. My brother, my sister, when you're going through troubles, People are going to speak such words. But the Lord has sent me to tell you that you're not alone. You're going to feel alone. No one will call you when you don't have a job. But you are not alone. Amen. Isaiah 43 verse 2 Isaiah namusato lokubiri When you pass through the waters I will be with you Dibera wa munawe and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And a flame shall not consume you. It seems right now you're feeling alone. The Lord has sent me to tell you that you are not alone. Jehovah God is with you. He's with you. He's giving you strength. He's like my daughter, you're going to make it. My brother, you my you know, you know, my son, you're going to make it. And it does not matter if the husband has left you. It does not matter whether your wife has left you. It does not matter whether your, matter whether your kids have disobeyed. To the parents, you got to remember the Lord. You have raised up your children in the fear of the Lord. But as I speak right now, your children are disobeying. Your children are not born again. Your children are going through a shaking change of life. It is so easy for people to blame you. They will say that say, you do not raise the children well. You do not beat them. Probably you don't beat them. Probably you don't beat them. Fast for them. But I am here to tell you. We are not alone. Surely the Lord is with you. I pray you met with the Lord. He doesn't have a dustbin where he throws prayers. Amen. Amen. Number three. Our suffering is not in vain. Amen. Number three. Our suffering is not in vain. 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 
God is preparing a greater reward for you. Katonda, is preparing a reward for you. Azimba County, yo. He's building up your account. Azimba County, yo, Muguru. He's building up your heavenly account. Azimba Masozo, Ezomo, yo. He's building your spiritual muscles. Everything that is attacking you now. You will be able to overcome all of them. You are not going through that trial in vain. It's not in vain. The disciples. After preaching the gospel, they were imprisoned. And and the angel of the Lord came and opened the door. The ones that were found in the market preaching the gospel, they went back to the same place where they were. They went back to the marketplace. And they knew that it would even cost their lives. But the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches. Kebere 41 41 is okube chija burunji Acts 4 41 they then left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer this honor for his name Amina Baba yo bazina mukama tukoye baza kubanga batu sibye na ye you know otukiza na fo kubona abona ko kulweri nyalyo let me tell you it's a privilege gwe boboli wano eh if you are here ngatobo na abona and you have never seen ngato inambera jo itamu you don't have any trial that you're going to weke stanya andi banga go yakuta probably the devil lets you be though you are still in church as a born again let them attend church amina amen Amina. They were rejoicing. So church, let's rejoice. Rejoice of whatever you're going through. Because God knows it. Because God knows it. You don't know what is in heaven. The Lord checked in heaven. In Job chapter 5 to 12, 6 to 12. Job chapter 5 to 12. And he said that I have a righteous grace on earth. Have you seen grace? She indeed loves me. And the devil laughed. And he said you gave her a good landlord. Because he never comes for his money. The landlord never goes to her house to collect his money. And the the Lord said if you think the landlord is the most important thing. He said go and touch the landlord. As I speak. The landlord chased you out of the house. He started by increasing your rent. Then he talks about the toilet that you use. Right now you don't have a place to stay. The Lord said you want to be going through that. He trusts you. Amen. Amen. Our pain and suffering is not in vain. Let's read Mark. Mark chapter 10, 29. Mark chapter 10, 29. Chine chawa ndiki wachige na kunyumira. Jesus said, I started on that on Thursday. Yes, sunagambanti. Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel. Who will not receive a hundredfold in this time. Houses, Houses nyumba, brothers, be, and sisters, abubuwala, and mothers, mama, and children, abana, and lands. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amina! I want to stop at that. Bible is saying, I want to stop at that. I want to stop at that. I want to with what? Why are you adding persecution, Jesus? With persecution. And in the age to come, eternal life. Amen. 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 Fire. 
Oite fire eri chigambo cha katunda. Amen. Let's go to number 4. God is able to restore. Katonda asobolira dalo kuzawo whatever Satan has taken from you. Chona Satan chaba yakunyagako. He's able asobola. Joel chapter 225. Joel 2:25 I will restore to you the year that the swarming locust has eaten The hopper the destroyer and the cutter Amayanzi naba no nabu no muono nyino musazi My great army which I sent among you Ejeri angeli amanyi lye naba weleza Job chapter 42 verse 10 Yo bwana mo bidio rekumi And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job. When he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Let's go to verse 16. And uh, And after this, Job lived 140 years. And saw so his sons and his sons sons and daughters four generations. And Job died an old man and full of days. I just Lord has sent me to encourage you this morning. Your story will end where? Your story will end where? You will not die in that situation. Our God is able to restore. Whatever joy Satan has taken from you. God is going to restore it. He will restore. And the last God Katonda is writing Awandika his gospel story through your life. Okuyita Your neighbors are not going to read the Bible. But they are watching your life. God is writing his redemption story. Through your life. He's building a testimony. Through your life. Amen. I want to tell you friends. At the end it's going to make sense. When you get at the end of the tunnel. When, when you get at the end of the tunnel. You will sing hallelujah and say thank God. For the situation I went through. Thank God for the poverty. Now I have learned how to pray. Thank God for the situation I went through. Hard times build you. As a person. The things that have built me. Are the hard situations that have been me. Are the hard situations that have been me. Every time I look back. I praise the Lord. That the Lord who took me out of there. Is surely going to take me through this. The Lord will take you through that situation in Jesus is dying People look at her lives and they get encouraged. People have come to me so many of them who have lost their children. And the only way they can be encouraged or have hope is because they want Pastor Wilfred to speak to them. They speak to them without even knowing what they are saying. But they feel encouraged sometimes. So the Lord is going to build certain people. God cares more about your story. And he wants to reveal his glory through the story. Ha. Simanyi gege nandiko gede mwako. Eh? Pastor Jas. God Katonda wants to reveal his glory. Ayagala la bisa chiti wache. Through your story. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God turns your sorrow into joy. 
My goodness, God is an expert at that. Today, everyone today was quoting the book of Job. If Job did not go through what he was doing, he, everything he went through. The book of Job will not be in the Bible. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The book of Job wouldn't be in the Bible. But because he went through, we are all encouraged. God was looking for the story. Amen. Now, because of the pain we went through, we started a hospital. And we like, no more kids should die like that. Now, an entire sub county is benefiting from that. Every month we see over 500 patients that come through Mass Medical Center. About like, uh, like 12 to 15 babies are delivered every month. I've seen so many lives that you know abantu abazenga otula wali no gamba bana ino muntu abadde bananga agenda kufa na yeka tonda yeba zo redu wala jino which a wede nali kudu wali sawa munana ogwe chilo omuchara naja yazali demu kubo naja ono munana gwa chilo ngendo kutuka wati ne bajena wa musevinga ngendo kula banga you know so many stories of people that would have died ngendo kula matu nyingi abandi food day for God to birth mass medical center yeka tonda loku zala obuwele zema madi mass medical center you had to fast Put me down. Your, my daughter had to die. And that brought a compassion in my heart. Because some people there is a seed of God that is going to germinate out of your life. Eh? Sometimes it has to fast rot. As I speak right now, you're being buried with soil. You're being covered up in soil. You're watching, but the Lord is looking at a big picture. He says, I want to see the main source of this corn out of this. So my friend, hold on. Endure. 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 This is a germination ingredient. Please, your your God, don't leave your marriage. Pray for him to get Musabire. Keep praying for him to get there. Forgive him and keep loving him. Time is going to come. And the seed will break forth. The ground. And you will germinate. Now we want to live by you. And bear fruit. Fruit that will last forever. Now as I really end. I want to pray with people. People who are going through situations. They're like, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. You've been speaking to me. I'm going to just ask you to please run forward here. We are going to pray for you. God will give you the strength. God will give you the grace. Hurry up, please. I'm I'm going to ask the pastors. pastors. To please, to please help lay hands on these members. If they touch you, then it's okay for you to go back to your seat. Just want you to surrender everything you have to God. This morning is giving you a special grace. Oh, Gwe mazo kwa atako, baba sumba gwe mazo kwa atako, saba odeyo mchifocho.